Hello everyone, welcome to another Friday new product post here at Sparkfun Electronics. Got a couple of products to talk about, as well as a couple of demos, so let's dive right in to the very first product. This is the Sparkfun thing. That's right, this is the Sparkfun ESP8266 thing. For any of you that are familiar with the ESP8266, it is this new Wi-Fi module that is sweeping the nation. It's a really popular Wi-Fi module for the main reason that it's really inexpensive and it's really easy to use. There's a huge community and a huge following behind it, and a lot of people have written custom firmware, all sorts of good stuff for it. And we decided to take that chip, put it on the board, and add some extra features to make it even a little bit more easier to use with um, you know, some better hardware on it. Here on the board, we have some mounting holes, the um, actual IC there. We've got a battery charger circuit and also a JST for you know plugging in your LiPo battery. We've got an on-off switch and we've also got the USB. So we've kind of combined some of the things that you would normally need to use with a Wi-Fi board all onto one. You can program this in the Arduino IDE so it's a really inexpensive way to get a Wi-Fi node into your system and also can be used as a microcontroller. We have a demo with Sean, so he's gonna tell you a little bit more about this board and show you what it can do. We're here in the hallways in the catacombs of the SparkFun building, and we've put together this demo using the SparkFun thing. The SparkFun thing is a board built on the ESP8266, and this provides us with a Wi-Fi connection, but you can also program it using the Arduino software. Additionally, it contains an onboard battery charging circuitry, so you could plug in a JST connector connected to a LiPo, but we just decided to plug it into the wall here. There is an ultrasonic sensor on this side that's watching this hallway. And we send that information to a window comparator so that you can't trigger off the hall, but you can trigger off every time something or someone passes. That goes to the thing, and that just increments a counter. We're just counting the number of people who use this hallway, really. That information is then sent over the Wi-Fi connection to data.sparkfun so we can go and watch how many people pass by this hallway every day. Jim built a few of these and we've placed them around the hallways in SparkFun. We want to see which of the hallways is most trafficked. You can watch this information by following the link below to the data.sparkfun channel. Classic Sean. We have another new product this week that isn't really new, it's more of a repackaging and rebranding of an older product that could use a little bit more attention. This is the Nintendo DS touchscreen kit. We've had the Nintendo DS touchscreen on our site for a really long time. And the problem with using the screen is it has this little tiny connector here at the bottom and you need a proprietary um, connector to use with it. So we have this little breakout for it and we've always sold it separately as the screen, the breakout, and then also the connector. And we're just getting rid of that silly nonsense. We're just selling it as a kit with the breakout and the screen because that's what you need to use the thing. This is a very simple resistive touch screen, meaning that it kind of has some layers of material like this. And when you actually press down between the layers, the layers touch and they create a resistance. And essentially what happens is you have an X plane, an X plane and a Y plane. And when you touch on there, you have two resistors essentially that are created. And based on the resistance value of those two, you can find out where you are on the touchscreen plane. So it's a relatively simple and easy way to add some kind of touch interface. You don't necessarily have to use this with an LCD. You can just use it as a basic touch that if you want to swipe across, you can read the change in that X direction as a change in resistance and then therefore do an action based on that. So it's a relatively easy way to add some kind of touch to a project by only using two analog pins. And SAR has a little demo, show you this in action. Here I have the Nintendo DS kit, which comes with our Nintendo DS touch screen, the connector and the breakout. I have connected it to a red board, an MP3 player shield, a mono speaker breakout and a speaker so that when you move across the X axis it changes the song on the MP3 trigger and when you move across the Y axis it changes the volume. So the way that this board works is it's a resistive touchpad, so you don't actually need any special type of pen. It just senses where on the X and Y axis you are pushing, and it conveys that back to the board. This screen is 2.2 inches by 2.75 inches. All it takes is four GPIOs 
which measure the resistance across the X and the resistance across the Y. So it's really easy to run, really easy code to set it up and get you started on whatever kind of project you want. Hip -hop.